Welcome to Wisdom of the World. Today I'm going to tell a story about a journey to freedom and love. It's a story from the Palestine. And it goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a king and a queen. And they were good kings and queens. They were really sweet. And they took good care of their people. They did, only did not have any children and they really wanted children. So one day when there was a, a man selling uh, with a basket full of pomegranates and the queen wanted to buy some, the guy said, no, I'm only going to give this to those that really want to have but cannot have children. So he gave a little piece to the queen. And yes, sure enough, uh, a little baby girl was born and her name was Ruana, Rumana. Now Romana was very well protected and she never left her palace. She was always taken care of. Everybody made sure no harm came to her. And after a while, the girl started to feel, let's say, uh, choked, uh, no, no fresh air. And she wanted to go out and she said so to her parents. And they said, okay, come on, we're going to make a walk in the forest and um, we'll take your nanny with you. Her nanny was called Rama. And so they went, they had a walk and the girl loved it. After a while she got also, yeah, a little bored because she was still, every movement she made was still watched. So she said to her mom, mom, can I please go with Rama tomorrow and uh, make a walk? And the mother said, sure, that's fine. Rama will be there to, uh, to make sure you'll be okay. And she gave Rama, the mother gave Rama kind of a horn that she could um, make sound with if there was any problem. So they went, they left, and uh, Rama was a little, you know, not the youngest anymore. So she had trouble following this jumping, running girl everywhere, chant happily singing and uh, at some moments she got just so tired and she sat down the little girl said oh, don't worry don't worry I'll, 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 I'm just gonna pick some flowers just 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 behind that those rocks over there and then I'll bring them right back and she did but when she got back she saw that Rama her nanny was just totally soundly asleep and just at that very moment, the girl just felt this surge of air, this surge of freedom all through her body. And she ran, she skipped, she sang, she ran as far as she could until it became night, dark. Then she got scared and she called and she called and she called. No answer. In the meantime, Rama had blown on that horn and everybody was looking for her. When it got night, Ruana, Rumana climbed into the tree, spent the night, waited there until it got light. The next day she went on and she came into a, a huge open area with a big house on and she knocked on the door. Nobody answered. So she went in and she saw there was a bedroom with three beds in it. There was a table with three you know, plates on it, and there was sort of a freshly hunted rabbit hanging in the kitchen. So she figured she was at the house of three hunters, and she was really hungry. So she cooked all that meat, and she uh, ate her share. She looked around the house and, you know, found a cupboard there, and she cleaned the cupboard out and put a mattress in there. And uh, she put, you know, the meat, she kept it in the kitchen simmering. In the evening, the three brothers, that's what they were, came home from a day of hunting and saw that, you know, somebody had been in their house and had cooked some meal for her. So they said, whoever you are, come out. We don't, will not harm you. But the girl was in her cupboard and she didn't dare to move. So the brothers couldn't find anybody, went to sleep, hunting the next day and the next evening again, the same thing happened. There was food and they called all around and nobody answered. So they thought, okay, one of us should stay here. First day, the, one, the oldest brother stayed and said, okay, I will watch, see whether anything 
I can I can find out who this is. And so he stayed there in the house. And in the middle of the day, the girl carefully opened the cupboard, tiptoed out, and saw that the oldest brother was fast asleep, asleep from just waiting there. And in the evening when the other two came home, they said, well, what happened to you? You just fell asleep. So the middle one said, okay, I will, I will do it the next day. So he did. Same thing happened to him. He also fell asleep. And on the third day, the youngest boy said, now I will stay home. So he did. And he put a wet cloth all over his head so that the, you know, the, the water just kept him fresh. And in the middle of the day, through, you know, the class that he had, he could see a little silhouette moving. And he said to her, who are you? And so she was caught and she told him the whole story. And he says, please, don't be afraid. We are here. No harm will come to you. So in the evening, the other two came home and they were very happy to see the girl with the youngest brother. And they the oldest one said, who uh, of us will marry her? And the youngest said, none of us will marry her. We'll be her brothers. And, and we will help her find her father and mother. And so it happened. And she stayed there for three years, basically taking care of the house and cooking. And the brothers brought her all kinds of gifts and really spoiled her and took care of her, really, as if they were her real brothers. And one day she was cooking the meat and she, she realized there was no wood left. And, you know, which she could cook with. And so she went out and started walking and walking and she came into, she saw a grot, a grot, uh, uh, a cave. And um, there was a big sort of monster kind of guy. He was in that cave and he was cooking and she said, hello, uncle. Um, I'm, uh, I'm greeting you. And the monster said, ah, your words, are, you, you greeted me before saying anything, so I cannot eat you now. What can I do for you? And she said, well, I really need, um, I need some, some, some wood so I can, you know, for my fire thing, for, to, to make fire. And so, um, the guy said, sure, here is one. I said, before I give it to you, though, please give me your handkerchief. And so she did, and he put a big uh, piece of uh, amount of um, uh, wheat in it. But he also made a little hole, just a little bigger than one grain. So uh, she took the handkerchief with the wheat in it and a piece of wood, which was actually already preheated, and she ran home to her big house. She had, did not notice that drops, you know, each little grains fell all the way to her door step. So she came home, she didn't tell the brothers anything and everything was like a normal evening. The next day, just the moment the brothers have left for hunting, there was a knock on the door and the monster said, hello there, this is your uncle. And um, she said, I cannot open the door for you because my brothers have locked it. And so uh, the monster said, just stick your little finger uh, through the, um, the opening, the key opening, and I'll suck it. And if you don't, then I'll bang in the door and I'll eat you up. So the girl was very afraid of the man and she stuck her little finger through there. And the monster sucked on a little finger, sucked on a little finger. And then he left. Rumana didn't say anything of this to her brothers. And the next day, the same thing happened. And again, she stuck her finger. And the third day and the fourth day, and she started to get weaker and weaker. And she, all of a sudden, she just, she was totally pale. And the brothers were very worried about her. And then finally, she told them everything that had happened. And then the boy said, okay, well, the next morning, if he comes back, uh, we'll be ready to fight him. And they were there next morning with their swords ready to fight the monster.
Master knocks the door and she says, <coughs> I'm so weak now, just come in and eat me. So the monster was happy, went into the door, and then immediately, you know, the brothers were there to hit and gave him a really big, uh, you know, hit, cut in the neck. And the monster fell down. And the monster said, hit me more, hit me more. And then one of the brothers says, no, stop. We know that if we hit you a second time, that you will actually even get stronger and be fine again. So they didn't, and the monster just laid on the floor and died. But when he fell, also one of his teeth fell off and it rolled into the shoe of Romana. Everything fine, but then when she put on her shoe, the, the tooth of the monster got into her foot and she fainted, she fainted, she fell down. And the brothers all around her said, oh my God, what happened? She died. And there she was, as if death, died, dead. And they said, what, should we bury her? And I said, no, we cannot bury her. We cannot have, um, you know, worms eat her. Uh, so he went away and he came back with um, um, a camel and a camel that was carrying a white camel, a camel that was carrying a, um, a box, you know, in which you bury the dead, but then one with a, with a glass uh, cover on it. And he got it down, put it full of all kinds of flowers and carefully put her in there and then hung the, um, that uh, box with her in it alongside the camel and said to the camel, now go. Go to where you came from. In the meantime, the brothers, you know, after losing Romana, just didn't have any energy anymore. So they just left the house and they roamed looking for her. The camel left and left and left and came into a town and started eating flowers from the royal garden. And um, the guards were trying to catch that camel and there was kind of a lot of a racket going on. The prince looked out from his balcony and said, what is all this? And he saw her and he said, oh, please bring that, you know, box into my room and please feed that camel. The poor thing is totally hungry. So the king, uh, the prince, when he came into his room, just could not take his eyes of Romana. She was so beautiful, so peaceful. He laid and he laid and he didn't leave his room for three days and three nights. The queen got worried and asked him, what is the matter with you? And he explained everything. And he took the queen into his room. And the queen saw the girl and uh, said, I think we should bury her, but let me first, you know, prepare her and balm her. And so the queen did, and when the queen was busy with her feet, she felt there was something hard on it. And when she pressed, uh, the, the big, ugly teeth from the monster came out. And at that moment, Romana opened her eye. And the queen took her to her room and says, no harm will come to you. And um, she fed her so that she gained some strength because she hadn't been eating anything for days and days. And after a week of taking care of her and feeding her, she called her son, the prince, and said, here, here is uh, um, the girl, the beautiful girl. And they looked at each other and they talked to each other and they fell in love and beautiful romance. They got married and she gave him two children, a boy and a girl. And they lived happily. This went on for about three years. But Romana was worried about her brothers and her parents. What happened to them? So um, she um, 
didn't know what to do. She wrote to them and she found out her parents had just also started roaming and the brothers also. So she went to the queen and the queen said, you know, Romana, put a sign, put your picture out by the fountain in the, in the central square of the, of the town and see what happens. And about a month later, three, the three brothers came totally exhausted, three strangers, if you wish, came to the square and saw that picture. <gasps> they said, that's her. And the queen had instructed the guards that if people would react like that, to bring them to the palace. So the guards came out and said, the prince, the queen would like to see you. And so they were intrigued. They said, why would the prince and the queen want to see you? So they went in there and they were put into a room to wait. And a little later, they saw an old couple also coming in there. They sat next to them. And finally, the queen and the prince came. And they asked, we saw you reacting like that. We saw you crying in the square. What, what, how do you know this girl? And then the brother said, she's our sister. And the king and the queen said, she's our daughter. And they all told their stories. And after the queen and the prince had verified that these were really her relatives, they called her in and so she came and um well you can imagine what a beautiful um um recovery and meeting that was she found her parents and her brothers back and so they all lived happily in that castle and um there the story ends life's journey thank you